Hello and welcome to this monthly's Melt portion of games we play for the month of August 2021. I'm Tim. And I'm Doug. And I'll start off with the first game because I'm the one that played it out of the two of us. It was called Who Would You Choose? Which was a very interesting game. Well, it was a prototype to a game. They're, they're still working on it. And it's a game about choosing the person you would pick to take care of all your stuff after you pass away, like taking care of how the will gets done, how, where you get buried, stuff like that. I know what happens if something happens to me. Nothing will get done. I'm sure there's things that will happen. I mean, I did, I did learn something interesting from this whole scenario because this was ran by a person at the med center. Apparently you can write down like what you require and give it to your doctor and they keep it on file. Which is what do you mean, like what you require? Like, you know, if if you <coughs> if you want to be cremated. Oh yeah. Stuff like that. Uh where you you want your cremations like to be sent to, like what funeral home, whatnot. Yeah. It can be Yeah, like, I know like, they, like I thought that'd be something you give to your lawyer, not like a doctor. Well But apparently they keep it on yeah. file for there. Uh, which I thought was weird. Um I thought you were just going hit by train. Hit by <laughs> if they can find any pieces of me, <laughs> more power to them. Uh, but it was a very interesting game to say the least. They're, they, it's a very serious topic that they didn't want to make you feel serious or sad about it. So it was in the style of a Jackbox game where, you know, a standard party game that you play on an app, but they're also making a physical board because the one person on the team says, you know, it has to be a physical game to count as a board game. Yeah. And like, it involves, one person rolling a dice, and that gives you the number card that you take to ask the question. Then you spin a dial to give you the type of person that your answer is. Like, if you were on an airplane that was going down, that you were flying, spin. What celebrity would you like to help talk you, you know, onto the ground? And then you sit there and you write your answer. And then, do you have an answer for that? Uh, who was my answer? Well, we spun in the, the select section we got was Arthur for that. So I put uh, Beatrix uh, Pearson, person? Whoever was Potter? Potter, yeah. Beatrix Potter was my answer. And then you next to that, you had to write down a person that you know. Hmm. And you did this 10 times, and you couldn't repeat a person that you know in any of the 10. So after you, Dad, and like Jenny, and Josh, I had to make up like six other people. <laughs> None of us are authors. Well, no. One answer had to be like the thing that you spot, oh. like celebrity, public figure, blah, blah, blah. And the next to that was like a person that you know in real life. Oh. And you never told anybody the real life answer. And then you went around and you gave your answer. And then if you're as confused as I am, it's okay. Well, like I said, it's a prototype. So if you read your answer, I'm like, this is my answer. And everybody in the group be like, Good answer, you get a point. Or, oh, that's an okay answer, zero points. Or, that's a stupid answer, negative one point. So, if you'd be like, oh, my brother Doug. No, you, you don't give the real life answers. Those ones stay secret. Those are just for you. Yeah. So, if you'd be like, the person I want to talk help talk me down is Morgan Freeman because of the docile tones will help me. Yeah, then you choose yes or no. Like, one of the questions is like, you're going pan shopping. What's, what superhero would you want to go pants shopping for you? And one person in our group picked The Flash. Because they're like, I hate the pants shop, and they could do it fast for me. Oh, that's a good answer. So I had to go, yes, no. That's a good answer. I went with uh, Bruce Wayne because he's rich. Therefore, he can buy my pants for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm selling you this celebrity to talk you down in an airplane. Well, it was Arthur. Yeah, but I, you said celebrity first, so maybe think... The, the, the guy that, that I, I'd pick for you would be Bobcat Goldwith. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Could you imagine that? Eh, if he knows what he's doing. So you, you went around and everybody did two questions. So, you know, we were in groups of five, so we had ten. And then you tallied up the points, and then whoever had the most points was the winner. And then, like, okay, the game's over. And it's like, no, there's one more question after the winner's been announced. And we're like, okay... And the last question is like, okay, now think that you're dead. Now look at your 10 names. Now pick one of those to tell them that you want them in charge of what happens to you after you die. 
Well, and I'm like, okay, and then what do we do? And they're like, nothing. That's how the game ends. I'm like, what? Well, I, you know, if you put Bruce Wayne down as an answer, that'd be the guy I want. He's rich. No, you have to pick from your list. Yeah, but if you were the guy who put Bruce Wayne... Because then, then the person that was writing is like, okay, now look at your list. Now pick a name on that list that you trust taking care of everything that you've done when you, when you pass away. I'm like, okay. And she's like, okay, now call them this afternoon and tell them that you wish they to do that for you. I'm like, well, that just How'd you call Bruce Wayne? You're calling the person you know in real life. Oh, I thought it had to be... I, I told you there's two lists. List A, which is the funny answers that the group knows. And then every question has an answer B, which is somebody in your real life. Like, oh, I missed that part completely. Okay, so shopping for pants. I would put like, oh, I would choose, I don't know, dad. Because why not? I haven't used them on my list yet, and I can't repeat. And then so, Bruce Wayne is your funny one, because he's rich. Yes, and those are the ones that we answer. Okay. Before. So at the end, we'll have ten funny answers, and then... So what if you don't have ten real-life answers? If you don't know ten random other yeah. people, then you're out of luck. <laughs> like, well, like I said, after I named you, Dad, Jenny, and Josh, I had to come up with six other people. So... After those people, I'm like, okay, and then she's like, okay, now choose one of those ten people off of the list of your people that you know in real life, and then think hard. Who do you want to take care of all your affairs after you pass away? Who did you pick? What? I picked you. Of course. Well, because <laughs> because she's like, oh, you have to call him. So I just acted like I was calling him, like, must be at work. Because I'm like... Wait, you were supposed to call them right then? Yeah. <laughs> Because I was like, Doug, I'm going to die. It's inevitable. We all die. I need you to take care of my stuff when I'm dead. Do that. Well, I already know that I, nobody gets anything. Well, I'm assuming most of my stuff will have to be sold to pay off my debt. My many, many debt. It was interesting because there, there was a mother and a son there. So the kid's answer was the mom. So he didn't have to call, which was easy. Like her, her answer. I should have signed up and went to this. No, he didn't miss much. It was kind of really stupid. Because then she's like, I want feedback. And, you know, me and John, or John and I, I guess, grammar here. Uh, John's made a couple board games in real yeah. life. We're like, yeah, you're trying to make a game about a serious subject, but you're so scared of making it serious that you go so far the other way that has nothing to do with it. Because the very last thing is like, okay, now remember, you're going to die after playing this game, probably. At some point in your life. Be sad about that. And solve this issue now. We were like, it should have been something through the whole game. Well, remember, if there's a pack of cards where you have a one in one shot of getting something, you don't get it. Yep. I mean, if so, that means you got a better, better shot of like because, never dying? Because they wanted to be a party game. So I'm like, okay, if it's a party game, most likely you'll probably know somebody in the group you're playing with. So I mean, we were like, we should have made the questions like, who in this circle that you're playing with would you want to like, Handle an issue if you like you snapped your leg and you had no income for a month and you're like, well, James over there is a sucker who would give me cash <laughs> for two months with my broken legs. Who's the biggest sucker in the group? Well, that's how I would answer. I'm sure <laughs> other people would be nice. You know, I have to go to the hospital. I'd be like, well, Jeff lives near the hospital, so it wouldn't be that much of an inconvenience to pick me up and drop me off because then he's right there at his house, kind of thing. You know, it was it was those kind of questions. Uh, it is a game that's being helped being made by the government because it's funded through like the Association of Elder something. She's like, yeah, we, we tend to play this game a lot in like retirement homes. Well, that's a great thing for retirement homes. <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, at this point, they should probably kind of already have their affairs in order. She's like, yeah, but we really want people to start thinking about this. I'm like, then put it in schools. Make it like an elementary school shelf game. Who wants so to play? here, call little Sally and let her know that she's now in charge of taking care of everything. Well, she they're like, we want people to think about it earlier on. I'm like, well, kids, do you want to play Candyland? Or what happens when you die? You know, give it a catchy name. And like, well, well Bill, isn't that Candyland in general? Or no, that's life. Yeah, that's the game of life for you. <laughs> I don't think you can die in that game, actually. I don't remember. So that was what? What? Who, who would who, you choose? Who would you choose? There's an app on your on your phone that you can download this game, but you can't play it unless you're at one of the events because they have to give you a code to unlock the app. Uh, it's also interesting because they steal the 
the type font for the show What Would You Do from ABC? And that's like the font for the, the yeah. yeah. So that was the game that you played. I didn't go to that event, and it sounds like I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, you missed out on $50. Yeah. And so the next game we played was called Ahead in the Clouds. Mm -hmm. That is a button shy game. Yep. Uh, it's a two player game. It's it's an interesting two player game because you set up the board and then the board can get destroyed, but it's almost always set up in the same formation because. Oh, yeah, I completely forgot this about. That's the main function of the game. <laughs> no, I completely forgot about this game, like in general. Is that why you want me to talk about yeah. this? Okay. <laughs> there, there are five cards. Yeah, they, no, they, right. they give you water, oxygen, hydrogen, no. stone. So water and stone. Yeah. And then there are two cards that one turns that into oxygen. Yeah. And the other card turns it into hydrogen. Yeah, and then one. And then. vice versa, there's another card where it's vice versa. Or you can flip those cards over. Yeah. And it takes the hydrogen and converts it back to the water and stone. Uh, so what you're doing is you each have a starting mill workshop. Yeah. And then you have to connect the buildings to yours. Yeah. And then you get those resources. Yes. But once you connect, you have three uh, actions mm -hmm. and the connecting to your workshop is a free action. Yes. So then you could c use all three to collect stone. You could use all three to collect water. You could use, you know, one to turn stone and water into hydrogen or oxygen. But if you have to go through your opponent's workshop, workshop, they get a bonus, uh, a stone or, or a water, it's whichever better. side their workshop is on card wise. Yeah. Um, or you could blow everything up and separate it if you didn't want to go through your, your opponent's workshop. So it's really only one way that you could um, set up the board. It was in an H form. Yeah, that was the only way. Um, so if you were the second player mm -hmm. uh, in the round, if you wanted something that your opponent had already attached, you had to use a bonus to blow it up or give them a resource. I thought it was okay because what you're working on doing is collecting the resources for contracts. Correct. Uh, so like one of the contracts was seven stone. One was six water. One was... Two of everything. Yeah, two of everything. One was like three hydrogen and three oxygen. Um... And after the third round, fifth round, and last round, the eighth round, yep. you had to pay resources. Yep, the first time you had to pay one, the second time you had to pay two, and the last time you had to now, pay Now, the, the only thing in the rule book that the rule book didn't say was what happened if you couldn't pay one of those. Yeah, you lost the... Uh, oh, that's right. You lost the point. Is that what it was? Yeah, like you total up all the points and then you subtracted a point at the end. So, um, again, yeah, button shy game, it's 18 cards. I I think the game would be very samey. Because yeah. there's only so many ways you can set up the the board. The board when you connect everything. Uh well they they, they have a tough side and an easy we played on the easy side. There was tougher contracts. Yeah, there, there was different contracts. And I guess did it come with expansions that yeah, we didn't use? I got one expansion which we didn't use. Yeah. Because you had to take out one of the cards. Yeah. Uh, I do like how the resource cards are set up where, you know, you mm -hmm. have them in front of you and you just rotate the card and the arrow points to you and then you flip over the card and it spins you. You did need to provide your own markers. Coins, yeah, to cover up the contract. Coins or blocks or something, something. to cover up uh, the round track and the contracts. Yep. But I thought it was a... Uh, it, was, it was a decent game. Yeah. Um... Again, there's only so much you can do with uh, these wallet size games. Yeah. And for for a two player wallet size game, it, it was decent. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll have to do sometimes is rank our button shy games. Yeah. Uh, our next game that we play is also a button shy game. This is Arcane Baker Bakery Clash. 
Uh, this one came, I got a couple of different expansions. I got the expansions that make it a one player game. Gives you a little scenario. Uh, but here you play as, uh, as rival bakers and you have three ovens. I can't stress this enough considering the person <laughs> I played kept having like eight or nine things in the oven. It's like, I got so much going on in the oven. I'm like, yeah, it's amazing. You're only supposed to have three things. I'm winning this game so easily. I, I forgot that like the first two times we played. But, uh, and I also forgot to move the... Yeah, it's, it's super easy to win when you forget how many things you're limited to and having to like move your markers down. No, move them up. Move, yeah. On the oven. So after each round, you have to move your oven one... Closer to the time of finishing. Yeah, and I would always forget to do that. Yeah. You know, you, you basically create monsters like giant gingerbread man or you create weapons like hot taffy and you know it yeah. deals damage to the other baker but and it's also a memory game yeah because you do have to remember how long the item is in the oven yeah because each card uh a lot of them have two times so yeah. like if you keep it till level four it's worth something or like level six it's worth something but if you take it out of the oven um, not on four or six when the marker gets to that, you lose a point. Yep. So you have to remember, okay, this card in this oven, if I take it out at four, it does this damage to my opponent. If I wait and take it out at six, it does this damage. Nice. And you only get three actions per turn. Yep. So if you take one out of the oven, and then you have to remember the other, it moves up. At the end of the round, you have to sort of time things out. And if you ever forget, you can look at your cards, but that's an action. That's an action. Uh, the only card I don't like in the game was the one where you could shuffle my stuff in my oven. I didn't mind that. I mean, it seems like a you weird still thing. beat me. Yeah, I know, but it seems like a weird thing because at that point, your next turn, all three of my actions have to be looking at the cards to see which one's which. You could just go by luck. That's what I did. <laughs> um, but uh. And, and I thought the, the cards that let you have like an extra action for so many rounds or extra, that was nice. Um, but you destroyed me in this game. That's well, a memory game. And I, I work in a field where you're forced to memorize things. Even though, you know, I kept forgetting how many ovens I could run. Yeah. And you kept burning things like crazy. You forget to move your timers up and then you move them up and then things would just burn. Well, no, I, I wouldn't get it right. Yeah. But, yeah, it was a, it was a fun game. It, I thought it was a good two-player game. Yeah. I'm going to have to try the, the one-player variant this coming month to report on it. But that was uh, Arcane Bakery Clash. Yeah. Again, by Button Shy. Yeah. And then our last game that we played for this month, we didn't get a whole chance to play a lot because busy time at the park for you. Yeah, working was uh, tons and tons of hours. Uh, it's another, so hopefully this coming month we'll have lots of games. Uh, so the, the last game we played was another button shot because it also came in with the other ones yep. at the same time. And it's Death Valley, which I think was the strongest of the three that yes. we played. I, I really enjoyed this game. And considering I thought I was getting destroyed mm -hmm. in it, we finished pretty close. Yep. You still beat me. Yep. It's, but it's you're building a scrapbook of your journey. Yep, you're going on a road trip and then scrapbooking them. Yeah. So you have a, a journey where you take either the face up card or the face down card of the draw pile and you put it into your your journey. And then every card has a different scoring feature in it. And so one could be if this is placed next to um, a card that has a rock symbol, mm -hmm. it is worth this many points. So you you then one of your actions could be to take from your journey and move that card into your scrapbook. Yeah. And it's sort of a push your luck too. Yeah. Because. Yeah. There, there are five symbols on the cards. You have sun, rock, water, light, I think desert. Uh, yes, I like that. No, animal. Animal. And each one has a certain amount. Like, I think animals, there's only three. 
and then rock was like four. Yeah. And you know, you can only have two in either row at any time. You can no, only have, total. Well, total. You can only have two. No, it was three. At uh, three, you busted. Yeah. So you can only have two of them total between your journey and your scrapbook. If you ever got three, all your journey cards would go away. They'd go back into the draw deck. Put into the draw deck. So you had to be like, okay, I have, like, in our case, there's only three animal cards. I had an animal, you had an animal. So I'm like, well, the next time an animal comes up, I'm going to take it because we can never bust an animal. Yeah. And, you know, the cards have that, and they also have, some cards have stars, which are worth points. If they're in your journey row. Yeah, if you keep them in your journey, unless you have a card, one card of mine has them score if they're in your scrapbook. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, a, what is that, Blind Man's Draw? Where it's like mermaid, mermaid, hook, cannon. Yeah, yeah. dead man's draw. Draw, yeah. Yeah. And you can't, you can't. Because it sort of press your luck because if you have two of the same symbol in your, your journey in your scrapbook and the face up card in the desert mm -hmm. is one that matches, you don't want to take that one. Mm -hmm. You want to take the face down one, but again, you're pressing your luck. So you really have to manipulate, because like I had a card where I scored points for the cards that were underneath it. Yeah. And I was able to hide a lot of the symbols. Mm -hmm. um, so that didn't hurt me as much. The one that hurt was when I got things in place and you had that, I had to clear my journey. Yeah. And so it's very card manipulation, um, very thinky. Oh yeah. Uh, for, for 18 cards, I think it's 16 because two cards were, or one, 17 because one card was, was like an eight, uh, an eight. An eight. But it was an eight on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> With the same side. You need a little standee to put in the middle. <laughs> but uh, very thinky. Um, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Out, out of the three we played, I think that was the best. Yeah. Uh, so my game of the month, I'm, I'm just going to start doing this as my game of the month. Yeah. My favorite out of the ones we played. Would uh, be Death Valley. My least game of the month, the thing I'll do, I'll be <laughs> negative on this channel. <laughs> Who would you choose? Uh, Even you're going to be like, Death Valley. No. Nope. <laughs> I mean, meh. It was a prototype game, so it was yeah. going to rank well. Um, so that's the games we played for August of 2021. Yep. If you played any of these games, I doubt you played Who Would You Choose, but if you were with Tim at that event. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, they ran like 12 events. Yeah. So uh, well, if you played any of these games, let us know what you thought. Let us know in the comments what you played this month. Yeah. Uh, we love seeing what everybody else is playing out there. Mm -hmm. uh, again, do hit the like uh, button hit, and ring the bell. Yep. Uh, share Subscribe, our video. Subscribe, yeah. share. Check us out on Twitter. It's, well, or we're or Instagram, not Twitter, Instagram. We do have a Twitter account, but whatever Tim puts all, us on. All our Twitter account says is hey, Check out what I post over there on Instagram. Yeah, there you go. So check out all our uh, presents. Again, we thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe. And, and I'm Doug. I'm Tim. And goodbye.